I'm gonna give you six of the best shoulder exercises that you can use for weightlifting, and we're gonna start right now. Okay, so when we're talking about shoulders for weightlifting, I like to look through three different lenses, okay? That first lens is gonna be strictly accessory work. So we wanna really build a good, strong foundation. We're gonna be working more on hypertrophic areas. How can we increase the actual strength and size and then later improve the innervation in the shoulder girdle? Okay, so that's really how I like to look at that first group. That second group, we're gonna to start to see a little bit more supporting exercises. These exercises might be a little bit more directly related to weightlifting, but not especially related to the technique yet. And then finally, the third level of exercise is gonna be directly related to weightlifting movements, okay? So they're gonna be accessory movements that you can use, variations that you can use, which will really blow up your shoulders and have a immediate impact on your actual execution of the snatch, the clean, or the jerk. So that's the lens that I look through, those three different levels. So we're gonna give you two exercises in each level to help get those shoulders nice and yoked so you can hit those PRs in the snatch, the clean, and the jerk. Okay, so those first two exercises, remember we're looking at this first lens, that first level is going to be accessory based. So we need to build a nice foundation. So if I get lifters that come into the gym and they're a little bit weak in their shoulders, these are the first things that we're going to do. And then as they age, let's say we're using someone like Haley Riker, who just got third at world championships. If we're using her as an example, we'll try to push these movements a little bit heavier over a long period of time just to make sure she's stable in that shoulder, her shoulders stay healthy, and she can keep making good progress with those heavier loads, okay? So the first movement that we're gonna use is going to be a Y, okay? So we wanna train a little bit of that lower to mid trap and even the rhomboid. So I wanna go here, okay? A little bit more of the rhomboid here, and then raise this up. Try and get that almost past the ear. Back down, scap with the rhomboid, comes back, boom, okay? Nice and controlled on the way down. Back, almost past that ear. Oh, I'm gonna move on the bench a little bit here. Oh, and if you can control it, you're gonna feel this a lot in the trap, a lot through the entire shoulder girdle. It's gonna feel absolutely fantastic. And it's gonna help you in that overhead position. Just do like four sets of seven, four sets of nine. That's gonna be plenty to help strengthen and make that upper back as strong as possible because of the shoulder strength. Ugh. Now, one of my favorite movements that I'll pair this with is going to be the dumbbell external rotation. So if I get set here, okay, I go nice and controlled, okay, nice and controlled, nice and controlled on the way down, rotate, back up. And the thing that we have to remember with the shoulder is that it is predominantly fast twitch. So you can load this pretty heavy, but start with like 10 pound dumbbells, okay? And go nice and controlled, four seconds through this, right? All the way down, boom. All the way down, control, boom. All the way down, boom. Now, we're up, you know, this is a 30. We need to be able to control that eccentric. And then what's crazy is that this is gonna transfer really well to rotating in the finish of a snatch, and it's gonna help you be more stable overhead. Build this slowly. Start with a 10, 12 and a half, 15 pounder. Do slow eccentrics, okay? Seven reps, slow eccentrics, seven to nine. And you can do that for three to four sets. And then over six to 12 months, slowly add weight. So you strengthen that. You get up to a 20, a 25, maybe a 30. And that's gonna help you have that really, really stable shoulder girdle. Now that third exercise, remember these next two are gonna be through the actual thought process of using strength movements that have a pretty good freaking carryover to the actual lifts, but they're a little bit removed from being specific, okay? So now, this is going to be a Z press. Typically, I would say set this so it's, it's about eye height, and then you can take that off. Now, the big factor is you have to focus on your trunk. In weightlifting, we're gonna have dynamic trunk control, especially when we do the dip of the jerk, okay? If we're dipping properly and we're staying very vertical, that's gonna help with a vertical drive, and then we, all we have to do is move our hips underneath the bar. If we don't have that dynamic trunk control, we're gonna be dipping forward, okay? That's where the Z-Press comes into play. So please give me a spot, pal. One, two, three. I'm gonna be here, just below my chin, and drive up. Boom. Boom. Two more. 
Now, what a lot of weightlifters tend to do when they first do this, they'll take this out of the rack and they'll fall backwards. They won't have that flex trunk. So you have to be stable in your abs and that's gonna link into your hips, okay? So when they take it off, they'll just fall backwards. So load this nice and easy. Make sure you're cueing that dynamic trunk control. That's gonna lead to a good drive overhead. Now, depending on the phase that you're in, you might be in the exposure phase. If you're in the exposure phase, I would do Z presses for five sets of nine. If I'm inside the summit phase, I might only do this for three sets of five, nice and easy, just to feel that good solid trunk control. Now, exercise four, we wanna look through the exact same thought process here, okay? So we're still in that lens of how can we start to apply this more specifically to weightlifting exercises. And this is something that we're actually using inside of Haley's program, inside of Ryan McDonald's program, okay? And we wanna think about when we're pulling, a lot of people will pull with the elbows forward. And what that does is that keeps the bar forward. If we come off the hip, we wanna think the elbows come back and up, okay? Back, so you wanna break your trunk, you'll get your elbows to break your trunk, and then that's when you're gonna turn with a snatch. You do not see people who have really good cleans. Watch Haley's videos in slow motion. She's not cleaning here. She's not cleaning here. She's cleaning here, okay? So we wanna feel the trap. We wanna feel the rhomboids. We wanna feel the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, the teres minor, major, all working together here and inside of her upper back. And that's where this next exercise comes into play. This is going to be a trap bar raise. This is very similar to a drag curl, okay? But we can load it a little bit heavier because of the barbell. So we'll get set, okay? And we wanna feel those elbows up. And I'll even say, get a little bit of hip movement in there and then lower with a slower eccentric, okay? So we're here, boom. That's gonna help strengthen that big finish and that's gonna help keep that bar really, really tight to the chest as you rotate into the snatch or as you finish in the clean, okay? This is something that I would recommend using inside the exposure phase, inside the comprehension phase. You do three sets of 20, three sets of 25, but I do recommend backing off of this when you get closer to the peak. Now, remember the lens that we're looking at, and this is the same lens that we use when we built out peak strength, okay? Head over to peakstrength.app if you wanna pick that up today, is that we are looking at accessory movements that will get us strong as and help transfer to the athletic world, okay? So now we're looking at it, all right, something like a clean, something like a snatch helps us be more explosive. They transfer really well to jumps. Jumps transfers really well to speed. All that stuff is intertwined synergistically, okay? There's this giant circle of training that is connected, right? So one of the next movements here is a great deadlift variation that you can use to really support the clean. And this is an exercise that when you see someone doing a power clean or a full clean or a clean off of a box and they tend to go forward, their pulls aren't as strong. They don't have as strong of a back. They don't have as strong of a hamstring. They don't have as strong hamstrings, okay? So then if you use this variation, you can trigger and give them that easier technical cue because it's gonna move a little bit slower. And over time, it's still gonna transfer really well to the clean. And it's going to be a clean grip deadlift with a shrug. You could call this a clean pull. You could call this a, a clean deadlift with a jump shrug. But I like to go here, get set. Okay. We want to cue our athlete to act like they're actually doing a clean. Pretend I've got 170 kilos on here and I can only clean 150. So we're going to load it. We're going to go heavier than we would actually be doing with a typical clean. So if we have high school kids, we might do this at 120K if their best clean is only 100K. Okay, so we're going to get set here. Pull nice and tight, come up, and then a big shrug. Nice and controlled on the way down. Boom. So when we get past the knee, we wanna really think about bringing those hips through just like we're doing a vertical jump. We go here, boom, okay? Down under control. If they lower with a good eccentric, they should be able to strengthen their back, load up those hamstrings really well. I also recommend using straps. If they're using straps, they can really, really overload it as long as they think, drive that chest up off the floor and engage the quads, hamstrings and back all together. And that's where it's gonna transfer really well to the sports world. Okay, so this six exercise, again, remember, we're looking at movements that are gonna be more skilled strength. It's gonna directly correlate to the snatch, the jerk, or the clean, okay? In this case, we're talking about the snatch. Now, this is also an absolutely fantastic movement to help improve your mobility. 
If you can improve your mobility in your ankles, you're gonna be able to do this a little bit heavier. If you can improve your mobility in your ankles, you're gonna get a little bit deeper, you're gonna have a little bit more upright trunk. When you have an upright trunk, you're gonna be able to receive the bar a little bit more effectively. This movement is going to be the snatch press in the hole. Okay, and so this exercise is going to be really, really challenging. But if I have weightlifters who can do snatch balances really, really heavy, but they still get pressed out quite a bit inside of competitions, then we're gonna try on the next phase in the exposure phase, we're gonna actually start to train them with that snatch press so that later on, if we're doing a snatch balance or a hang snatch, something like that, that's gonna be a little bit heavier, they have that strength to fire really quickly in the shoulder position. Okay, so that's where the snatch press in the hole comes into play. I like to start this, where we might do snatch presses standing, okay, just to feel it, just to warm it up. Then we go down into that full squat position and we'll do snatch presses with just the bar. Then we build up over time. This is something where you do wanna to try to establish a limit as well, where you can say, hey, if Quo can snatch press 60 to 65 kilos and she snatched 110 kilos, we should try to find that percentage and try to get to that because she's one of the best that has ever done it. So let's use that percentage as a guide. So for us, somebody like Haley, okay, she snatched 85 plus in training. In comp, she's only snatched 84. So for her, that might be a little bit lower, 45 to 50 kilos. I don't know the exact math. I'd have to do it a little bit later, but that's where we're working with Haley, starting at 35, getting to 38 kilos, getting to 40, getting to 45 kilos, which is really, really challenging. I recommend if you're in the exposure phase, four sets of five, four sets of seven, get a little bit more of a pump. I would use this in comprehension phase, and I would also use this in the ascension phase, but I would not use this movement in the summit or realization phase when we're trying to peak. So use all six of these movements this week in your training. Go in, write down your programming, and you can try all six of these exercises on different days. If you need help with your programming and you don't know how to actually write something out, you can click on the link down below, head over to garagestrength.com, and you can pick up any of our weightlifting programs to help you hit those monster PRs. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.